process is really for the Jack Nicholas Joint Venture Group to begin the detailed technical phase of looking at the proposal from their perspective. This will involve um, a lot of work in terms of ecology surveys, environmental surveys uh, and the like. And those will take a period of approximately 12 to 14 months <coughs> to complete. Uh, and they're due to start in, in around March, April of this year. Uh, all of those surveys and reports are necessary uh, because of the requirements that there will be through the planning uh, process uh, to do habitat uh, regulation assessments uh, and other technical surveys as part of that process. Um, after that technical phase has been completed, uh, the proposal then is to share uh, the finalised proposal from the Jack Nicholas Joint Venture Group uh, for further consultation uh, with local residents before a planning application is submitted. And then following that consultation, uh, the joint venture group may decide to further amend the proposals or depending on, on what people uh, think about those. And then um, probably in about 16, 18 months time, we're likely to be receiving a, a planning application uh, from the Jack Nicholas Joint Venture Group, uh, which will then go formally through the planning process. Uh, in that process, there will be formal statutory consultation, uh, which is a normal part of the process, and it'll probably take us about uh, three months to actually um, assess any planning application that we receive and report that then to the Council's planning committee, who will uh, take the decision uh, on that planning application uh, from the council's side. Uh, if the planning committee are minded to approve that planning application, then it will have to be referred to the Secretary of State because it's technically uh, what's known as a departure from the local land use plan um, from there. And then the Secretary of State would have to decide whether he's going to call in uh, that application or was happy with the decision that, um, that was to made. Um, throughout the uh, next stage of the technical process, um, the Council uh, will be advised by the Merseyside Environmental Advisory Service, that's MEAS for short, uh, for those of you who know them and the work they do. They work for the local authorities across Merseyside and they are staffed by um, various ecologists and a whole range of other professionals who give us support on the habitats regulation assessment work that we have to do. We've also um, got ongoing discussions with organisations like the Environment Agency over the flooding and hydrology issues in and around the site. Uh, we're also um, working with the uh, Cheshire Wildlife and World Wildlife and the RSPB who've agreed to support MIAS by providing um, data and other information on the birds that use the area and, and a whole range of other issues uh, which is really positive. Um, and helpful. Uh, they, those organisations, I should just point out, have reserved their position, so they won't commit uh, one way or another to the scheme, uh, but they are prepared to uh, provide us with the information that um, we need, and they've got a lot of that that's valuable input. Um, we're also going to meet with uh, other interested parties, there's some people concerned about road access, uh, there's others who are concerned generally about the proposals and so on. And so I think as the technical phase develops, uh, there'll be a series of those meetings that will go on um, as well. So that just gives you, hopefully, uh, members, just an update on where we currently are with the Hoy Lake Golf Resort proposals. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, David, thank you for that uh, full and considered uh, response. What I picked up was two-thirds of the dropping centre seemed vaguely positive. However, there are a lot a lot of technical issues that need to be collected, considered, scrutinised uh, and thought about um, and then whatever whatever World Council says and whatever um, planning committee says there is still the, uh, the backstop there of the Secretary of State to make sure that everything is done appropriately and above board. So I think that's the takeaway that we, we need to from that. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Colleagues, has anyone got any question they particularly want to ask Dave, Bird, Just Jerry? Just a quick question, Jeff. Of course, Jerry. 
I don't know who might. So, so, so what are you saying, the saying then? The, 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 the earliest possible time that they could start building would be about what, five years' time? Is that what you're saying? Years for planning. Uh, no, I'm. I don't think it's five years' time, uh, Councillor Ellis. Probably, from the indications we've got at the moment, the planning application will probably be within, in with the council in about 14 to 16 months' time. And then it'll take us a further three to four months to determine that from the council's perspective. And then probably another month or two for the Secretary of State if planning committee was minded to approve it. So that, roughly by my calculations, is about, um, say, two years' time, maybe two years' time? Well, more than that, Dave. That's a question. Then it gets called in by the Secretary of State, so it's yeah. going to be another year or two. Okay, then, yeah, so you had your question, you had the answer, you differ to what the professionals think, and so we'll work out who's right or who's wrong. So, thank you very much for that. Has anyone else got any questions arising on that? Again, um, you know, I don't want to appear like Lady Bountiful or anything, but I, I, I do want to thank the, the people that are putting in the work to make sure that it is really technically correct and that all the information is gathered and everyone has the opportunity to comment and scrutinise that, uh, that information. I think that's really important. So, thank you very much for that. Um, right, the bit everyone's been waiting for, I'm sure, John certainly, um, community question time. Um, so, uh, I was hoping, I did promise Jerry actually, I, I'd try and be, get this back on track and be finished by nine. I don't think I'm going to, but we'll see, we'll see how we go, um, but we'll try and put a limit on maybe quarter past nine perhaps, if that's alright with everyone. So, we'll have a go at community question time. John. Uh, John, please. Hang on, if you... Uh, my name is John Hutchinson. My name is John Hutchinson. Can I just clarify, please, how many responses did you have? Everyone gets one, you, Craig. How many questions do This morning, there were 476 responses on your website, not 600. Is that your question? Because I'll no. move. There's other people no, want to speak. Because um, I, I, query, I query your uh, percentage of uh, support, because of the 476 responses that I have had a chance to read on your website, I find that there are 400 comment, 1,400 comments and questions asked of Council, of which there were 39, 89, sorry, 89 people who outrightly said, let it go, I'm all for it. So the other 1,311 had some sort of reservation. Now, here I present to Chairman okay, my analysis of those uh, uh, responses that we've uh, that we made to Council, and here, for his benefit, in case he can't interpret them, I've given him a narrative interpretation. But again, that's very common. Which, <laughs> which breaks down the uh, responses that we made to uh, the council uh, drop-in session. You may remember when we went to the drop-in sessions, we were asked John, at the end... can I ask you to bring your remarks to a question, please? Yes. I seriously call into doubt the result, but two-thirds of the community support the result. OK, I think that's... Uh... Since I could find only 89 out okay. of 1,400. Uh, David, do you want to tell us how can we got your arithmetic so wrong? And also, of course, where are the other 200 questions and responses? Okay, I'll, I'll try and answer the, the question. Um, we, we did get just over 600 responses from the consultation drop-in sessions that we did and the extended period up until the 14th of December when we had the display uh, at uh, West Kirby Concourse. Um, what we did when we um, redacted personal information and we published the, the comments on our website, if you get a chance to look at those, the way that the questionnaire um, was, there was three options 
or views that we ask people for, whether they supported it, supported it with some concerns, or didn't support it at all. And we got 600 responses to that, and the figures I gave you earlier, uh, I do believe are accurate in terms of the analysis of, of, of those responses that we received. Uh, the comments that uh, John is just referring to, very briefly, all of these comments on here are from the comments boxes, so it's difficult to move them all back to the 600 because some people made 10 or 12 comments in, in one box. Indeed, they but we've pub that. Yeah, we've published everything so that everybody can see it, so it's open and transparent. Thank you, Chair. Good, open and transparent, we like. I'm just impressed that only eight people have called into question Council's management skills. I know more than eight people who call into question yeah, Council's there are management skills. <laughs> um, who say councillors are getting a kickback. Oh! Can I just ask one question on, on the golf resort? If and when it gets built, are you going to use local labour? And when you do, and if you do use local labour, whatever labour you use and whatever firms you bring in as contractors to build this, are you going to ensure, unlike Liverpool City Council, are you going to ensure that those companies don't operate a black listing list? Well, I, and I'll pick that up, because um, first of all, we don't know if it's going to be built yet, because of all that stuff that they've just been through about all the technical assessments and so on and so forth. So I think it's one step at a time, and then we work out where we actually get to as, as we go as we go through what presumes. We'll be intending to get the um, With the Jack Nicholas Joint Venture Group, who will build the golf resort if it is approved, um, what we will do is um, we will work with them and try and ensure that the contractors that they do eventually employ, if it does go ahead of course, um, utilise to the maximum local labour, yes, for the benefit of the area. Yep. Thank you. Well done. Um, do you know what, sorry, I did promise over here a little bit earlier on, so, um, yeah, go on, Stan.